Welcome everyone to a new game here on the channel called Foundation. Foundation is a city builder that was recently released through the Early Access program on Steam. Now being Early Access, that means that this is not a full release. You're going to encounter bugs and crashes and the content that you currently see in the game is certainly less than what should be available at full release. So keep all those things in mind. But if you're like me and you enjoy city builder type games, then you might be wondering whenever you see a title like this, what's the gameplay like? How much content does it have for me right now? Um, or would it be better for me to wait until much later in the development and there's a lot more content and a lot of the bugs and issues have been taken care of? And that's what we're going to be dealing with in today's video. My plan is to show you the basic settings here on the menu, and then we're going to go into some gameplay, and I'm going to show you exactly the type of things that you're going to be doing in the game. Now, one interesting uh, note to point out at the, here at the very beginning is there are currently no enemies in the game. It is simply you and the economy. So your, your ability to balance the economy, your... Uh, both the flow of money in and out of your colony is what's going to determine the difficulty of the game. And to the best of my knowledge, there is no plans in the future to add enemies on the map. So the map we're going to see is entirely available to us to expand as our ability to control the economy allows. So moving on to the main menu, you can see, of course, the version at the very top. Uh, again, don't let the 1.0 mislead you this is an early access title uh, and in fact once we get into the game world itself you will notice that the build in the bottom right hand corner says alpha next to it just to clarify we have the option for a new game to load a previously saved game then we got settings mods and then of course quit now the mods tab is going to be very interesting to see how this develops uh, as the game progresses if you're familiar with city building games, you know there are tons and tons of mods that can possibly be added. So I'm very interested in this in the future. Uh, so if we go back to that idea of enemies, perhaps a mod could be added later on in the game's development that will allow us to at least have some sort of enemy on uh, the map if you decide that that's something that you would enjoy. Now let's go into the settings very quickly. This is a very basic layout. You can see under the general tab, we have uh, language, scale, autosave, which I, is on by default. I've turned it off uh, basically because this early in the game, I'm not terribly worried about saves since things will be changing on a regular basis. Uh, edge scrolling currently is on. We move over to the graphics tab. By default, VSync is enabled. I've turned that off. And then you can see the fairly standard list of options once we get into the game in the top left hand corner you'll be able to see the frames per second and frames per second for me have really been a non-issue to this point but we'll see how things go as uh, the game progresses and then finally we've got the audio tab i've turned the music for youtube purposes uh, and recording purposes in general i've turned the music all the way off and the other volumes are left at the default max level. So there you have it for the main menu options. Again, very basic and straight to the point. Now let's move on to the gameplay. To get started, we're going to click on new game and then we're going to have a couple of options. Under balancing right now, there is only one option for default. So we'll have additional options as the game progresses in, in that opportunity. But then under map, we have hills, coastal, fluvial, mountain, and valley. Now these are different types of map, but keep in mind that at least currently in the game, these are not randomly generated or procedurally generated. These, if every time you click on the hills map, it will give you the same identical map. And we'll take a look at that here in just a moment. So keep that in mind. Uh, but of course, you're gonna have some different types of terrain, but you're gonna have the same basic uh, resources on each of these. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the hills map and start the game. All right, now that we've got our hills map loaded and ready to go, uh, the first thing I wanted to show you guys is the top down view, which will show you the size of the plots of land that we're gonna be dealing with. And that's important because as I change the perspective of the camera, you can get an idea for the size uh, and the scale of this particular map. 
So there is a lot of room. And because there are no neighboring cities or enemies uh, to worry about, all of this area is available to us to expand. So he gives us plenty of time to do what we need to do to get our economy to a point where we can continue expansion without running into uh, a negative balance. So let's go ahead and start off. Now we can purchase land on, on any of the areas of the map. You'll see the different uh, squares are available at certain spots. Uh, and this is generally the game trying to help you out by showing you the areas where you have resources that are abundant. So for our purposes, we're gonna choose this particular plot of land. That one was free from here on out we can choose to purchase additional plots of land, but that's really not needed, particularly at the beginning of the game, because as you uh, complete different goals and tasks, you're going to have the opportunity to get, receive free tracts of land. So it's really non, uh, a non-issue, uh, particularly early on in the game, which is what we're focused on for this particular uh, video. Okay, so now we're going to zoom in a little bit and let's just take a look a little bit at the graphics. You can see some very nice cartoon looking graphics, uh, particularly with this being uh, in the alpha. Look in the top left hand corner, you can see my frames uh, per second. And this game is not terribly demanding on uh, the graphics. So the cartoon look uh, really works for me. I really enjoy this. And so let's take a look at our, our basic resources that we're going to need. Uh, of course, we got trees for wood. You've got stone that we can work with in various capacities. And then you've got our berry bushes, which will provide us with the berries, which are great not only for food, but also uh, for trading, particularly early on in the game. So this particular plot of land, just as the one next to it had, it's got everything we need to get started. So the first thing we need to do in the game is going to let us know we need a village center. But before we get into that, I do want to take uh, a couple of minutes here and look at the menu options. Some of these you'll find yourself using quite a bit, uh, and some of these you'll, you'll want to keep up these windows on the sides of the screen. Others you might not use very much at all. We start with the top left-hand corner, the frames per second, uh, which will show there again because I have VSync off. That number is going to be quite a bit larger than the 60 it would be. Uh, if it were tied to the monitor. We have a village information window, which will allow us to change the name of our village. It also lets us know when our next immigrants are gonna show up. They generally, uh, from my experience, show up two at a time. That, I haven't seen just one show up and I haven't seen any more than two show up, uh, but your mileage may vary. So it's showing us in seven more days, we are expected to get immigration. This will change. Um, depending on the status of your village. If you're meeting all of your villagers' needs, then this number goes down. I've seen it go down to, you know, two or three is a pretty normal amount once you get things up and running uh, in your village and you get, you know, everybody's working and everybody's uh, working on their particular production in their profession. So this number can and will change. In fact, it will probably go up uh, pretty soon because, again, we're just getting started out and we're in no position uh, to accept newcomers at this particular point. Now, the upgrades that you see here, by default, these are checked. Uh, I have not seen this come into play yet. In fact, I'm not even sure it is available at this point in the game, but the, the housing upgrades and the density upgrades we'll get into a little bit later on in the gameplay once you get into residential. But that is the village information window. Then we have the warning window, Okay, well, let's get that village window out of the way. Right now, all is good. This will let you know if you are severely lacking in taking care of the needs of your villagers. This will turn red, and you'll know that you've got something going on. Right now, you see we have no villagers because we haven't placed our village center yet. And then our level of happiness. Naturally, we want to get this as high as we can. That will certainly help us long term. Our... Our resource panel will list all of our resources as well as the amounts. And again, we'll come back to that once we have some production going. And then we have our labor, kingdom, and clergy. This will come into effect more as the game continues. And you can uh, get bonuses by 
uh, performing certain uh, certain tasks for either the clergy, the kingdom, or the labor. And we'll get into that. Uh, I'm not sure actually if we'll get into that in this video because that's a little bit farther down the line. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. Then over to the top right hand corner where we have some paint development zones, which we'll come back to uh, once we get a few villagers and we're ready to put them to work. But let's go ahead and start with our village center. This is what we're going to use to actually get our starting villagers. I'm actually going to put this guy down about right there, fairly close to the center. And now we have some villagers to deal with. Okay, I'm not going to worry about pausing the game uh, as I would normally do around this time. Uh, we're going to let things progress and let these guys walk around a little bit. Right now they don't have any jobs or anything to do. Uh, but you notice that there is already a beaten down area where the grass has been trodden down. This is one of the game mechanics that I really enjoy because as your villagers move around, they will create their own path. So essentially they create their own roads. Uh, so the more often they travel a particular path, the more well-defined that particular path will be. So now that we have this up there, we can come back to our paint development zone. Right now we only have two zones available. The forbidden land where we do not want these guys to go and the extraction area. Now the extraction area is, as the description shows us, is we'll need to define where they can go to cut wood stone as well as gather berries and we're actually going to paint this area now you can change the size of the paintbrush here but uh, the default should work perfectly fine so what i'm going to do is actually just left click and hold down the left mouse button and just highlight all of this area that i want them to actually work in uh, and in this case they will be chopping wood in this particular area all right that should be plenty of area for them for quite a while next we're going to highlight the area with the stone and then we're going to do the same thing with the bushes now that will get us set up for where these guys are going to get the initial resources so now we need to come back in and set up some of our initial buildings okay let's set up a lumber camp and I'm going to put this up near where I want them to to cut the trees so right in there should be perfectly fine we're going to set up a gathering hut which will need to be down near the berries I'm going to put it right about there we need a stone cutters camp which will need to be very close to the stone uh, let's actually put it right about there and you can always rotate these guys if need be uh, we're going to need a well so let's go ahead and rotate this well a little bit and put it right about there and that should do it for right now there's a couple more buildings that we're certainly going to need but these are the basics now you'll notice that even though I have set about some commands to build certain things nobody's doing anything and the reason for that is we don't have a builder and for that, we're going to come down to the bottom left-hand corner and take a look at a couple of these menu options. You've got the villager list, which I find handy to leave up on the screen, as well as a workplace list. Now, I usually leave these toward the center of the screen and toward the bottom because the game likes to put uh, all of your goals and uh, update information toward the top left-hand corner of the screen. So this will keep them out of the way. And right now, everybody is unemployed. So I'm simply going to choose one. Uh, this is where you're going to see all of their skill sets. Now, for right now, this isn't all that involved. You can see they do have a little bit of skill in three different areas, but I need a builder. So let's go ahead and set up one builder. And that's going to allow this person to go ahead uh, and get started building for me. And everybody else will be unemployed. There you can see our builder. She is headed up to take care of uh, our workplace, our initial workplace. And then we'll start to fill out this workplace table as well. And this is going to give us uh, a few different options in order to assign 
workers. We can assign workers to a workplace directly from the villager list. So just like we did with the builder, I can simply click on the villager and uh, select what I would like for them to do. Looks like we've got a lumber camp that is up and ready to go. The other option is to use the workplace list or I can click on the workplace itself and add workers. In this case, I am going to add two workers as woodcutters and that will get them started working there. You can see our builder has now come down to uh, the berry hut and we'll work on that. Should be done pretty quickly because the beginning buildings don't require a whole lot of resources. Okay, let's go ahead and increase the speed. So we'll see how far we get here in this initial video, but the purpose of this really isn't to uh, get very far into the game or talk about strategy or anything like that. This is more about showing you the basics of the game and what the gameplay looks like, particularly early on in the game. So you can decide if this is a title that interests you right now and something you want to get involved with right now uh, at this point in early access, or if maybe you decide you need to wait a little bit longer for some more uh, updates and uh, gameplay to be added before you're interested in purchasing the game. Gathering Hut is now completed. I'm going to put two foragers there. That leaves us with three unemployed workers. The next thing we're going to need to do, and the game will keep you updated on where it wants you to go because one of the things you're going to want to do early on is as quickly as you can you're going to want to get to a market so that you can trade and lo and behold there it is once we have a few of the basic buildings it's telling us where it would like for us to go next in order to eventually get our money situation up and running so now let's actually click on the stone cutter and we're only going to put one stone cutter for right now as we need to take care of the number of unemployed that we have because we're going to need to do a few things. So here it wants us to build a market. Now if we if you notice in the build menu under the general tab there is no market but there's two other options here. Under decoration you have a fence as well as a decorative bush but under the monument we have the market and you're going to see there are a lot of possibilities here. For right now, we just want the basic. We're going to do a food stall. And I'm actually going to have this guy, let's see, where do we want him to go? We'll put him around this side. So I'm going to put him, and again, you can see our nice paths that are developing. So we're going to put him right along the side there. Uh, but you can see it's not actually going to construct anything yet because we haven't clicked on start construction. And that's simply because the game is allowing us plenty of opportunity to build out our market area as much as we desire. But for, for our purposes right now, this is perfectly fine. We're going to use this, start construction, and there you have it. All right, excellent. We've got our well that is up and running. We've got some guys out here cutting down trees. Uh, a little bit later on, as things progress, we'll have the option for reforestation so that uh, you can keep a renewable source of wood around rather than having to continually search out the map for more areas of wood. So reforestation is an option as you continue on with the game. Okay, so it looks like next up is a stonemason's hut, but we've got a few steps that we're going to need to get to before we can get there. Okay, now our well is actually done. So she goes back to work on our market, which shouldn't take all that long. There we go. Market is done. Green check mark next to it. So now we need to assign somebody to work there. Well, we've got two unemployed people, so we'll just assign one of those. So now Walter is working here but we're not quite done we need to decide what this particular market is going to do and you can see it says it sells food to the villagers well it is a food area and right now the only food we have are berries so that makes it pretty simple so we've set up a market and that's important for a few reasons number one it's going to be important for trade but also it gets us 
some gold so that we don't run out. And now that has triggered uh, one of our messages. So we're going to have the ability to increase our relationship with labor, kingdom, and clergy. This is where you're going to have the option to do that. You're going to have various goals uh, and opportunities for quests where you will deliver a certain number and amount of goods as time goes on. But for right now, it, the kingdom is recognizing our efforts in establishing our settlement, meaning that we've got the basics set up. So right now, this will modify our influence by plus four in two of the categories. And you can see those there, labor and the kingdom. So as time goes on, we're going to have the opportunity uh, to increase that. Okay, so as we zoom out, again, our paths are becoming more and more developed as time goes on. The next thing I really want to get up and going, uh, you can see now we have the stonemason's hut that is available. I want a sawmill. Now, where are we going to put this sawmill? Uh, I want to put it over here fairly close to the wood. Uh, actually, let's put it right over here behind the well. That should be perfectly fine. All right, so we have one unemployed person remaining. Let's look at our village information windows and see in two more days, we'll be getting some additional villagers. So that is very good. And of course, time passes pretty quickly when you're running at a times three multiplier. Now, so far, we've looked at the windows that I use most often. There are a few additional windows, the build walls, uh, which right now you can see it doesn't really have uh, anything that we can do there, uh, and really no reason to build walls other than for the aesthetic uh, purposes. Here they come. Two new villagers are going to show up, and they're going to spawn in from the edge of the map and there you see them on their way again creating a path along the way so they'll work their way over they'll head to the village center and then they will be added to our villager list so that is very good now let's see what it resets to 10 11 days okay so we got some more work to do before we can get any additional villagers all right it shows we need some housing and the way housing is handled in this game is you don't build it the way you would place the normal buildings within the areas. You simply set up a residential area. So what I'm going to do is you see the path that these guys are creating. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up a residential area right in here. And that way those guys, uh, in fact, let's just go ahead and expand this on out. And we'll give all of this room for residential area. And you can see immediately work begins on this area. So now we have not only our extraction area for resources, but now we have a residential area. And again, immediately these guys get to work on that. Let's come back to our public buildings. Uh, let's see, are we done with... Yes, we are. So we need to assign at least one carpenter here. This is going to be very important because he will make planks out of wood for us. And those planks will be used to build our warehouse. Okay, so now let's actually spin this guy around uh, because I want to put him right here on the edge of this path. We'll put him about right... There we go. And I actually want to prioritize the building of the warehouse because the housing is very important. Obviously, we need some more housing for a couple of our villagers. But for right now, I also need to get our trade up and going and the way to get that up and, and running. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and add another builder for right now. We won't, We may not need to long term, but for right now, these guys are unemployed, so let's go ahead and get them something to do. We have one additional worker available. Let's come back in and see. Uh, right now, let's go stone cutter, and we'll get two out of five there. So we've got some fairly good production going. 
Okay, the next thing on our list would be the stonemason hut. But right now, I want these guys to finish up the housing as well as uh, our storage for the warehouse. So this warehouse will have the ability, uh, just as what we saw with the market, we'll have slots available that we can choose what items we want to be stored in this warehouse, and that will affect our trade offers. Also, if we come over to, uh, let's take a quick look at our budget. Uh, looks like we are in the positive. Our total is a plus 54 right now. So we are looking very good there. Our income from villager consumption. Again, this is all from our market area. So our villager consumption is 72. Our upkeep cost is not that much. So we are doing quite nice. And again, you can get in as much detail as you want to break down uh, where your costs are are coming from as well as where your income is coming from. But for right now, we are in pretty good shape. We are above 400 on our gold, so we are doing well. All right, there we go. We are done with our warehouse. Uh, we do not currently have a villager to put on this. So what I'm gonna do is actually take one of our builders and I'm gonna make them a transporter. And now we get two new villagers. Here they come. And now they are listed as unemployed. So let's come back to our workplace list. And let's see. So let's go ahead and put one of them in the sawmill and the other one in the warehouse so that we can keep goods uh, moving pretty efficiently there. All right, now we'll come back into our, work our uh, warehouse now that we have some things uh, up and running. So let's pick slot number one. Uh, we're going to want to be berries because we're going to want to trade in those. Uh, we're also going to want it to be planks. And let's see, what other items do we want? So for that, we're going to need to come in under the trade window. Uh, we need to unlock the trade route first. And the easiest way to do that right now for us is going to be with planks. So once we have 20 planks in storage, which right now we have 13, once we have 20, we'll be in good shape to unlock this trade route. And then we have a few options. Davenport is going to have the following items for sale, bread, fish, as well as tools. But most importantly for us is what are they buying? They will be buying berries, polished stone, as well as planks. So planks and berries in particular are what we're going to want to focus on right now. And then we'll get into the stonemason a little bit later. There we go. You see we're t we've turned green here. Let's unlock that. So trade is now enabled. Excellent. That will open up our trading resources tab, which now will allow us to set up what do we want to trade in. And then we've got some options. By default, everything is on no trade. We can choose to buy until the inventory reaches a certain value or sell as long as it's above a certain value. So right now what I'm going to do is we're going to start out with as long as we have more than, we'll say 20 berries. Go ahead and sell those to the trader when he comes in. And here we're going to want to keep planks. We'll go ahead and do that. Now tools. Since right now we don't have a way to make those on our own, I'm going to set a buy value, buy until we have 10. So as long as we have 10 or more, it's not going to purchase those. But as time goes on, uh, we will deal more in that. Here's our polished stone. We'll sell when we have above 10 of those as well. So things are looking very nice. You can see some buildings that we have ready for us whenever we reach the next step. Now, to reach the next step, in order to get from a serf to a commoner for our villagers, we're gonna need a church. So let's go ahead and set up a couple of other things here. Uh, let's see, polished stone. And I believe that's actually all that we can trade with. Yes, we have these three items. So we're gonna leave it at these three items and make sure that we have our green accept checkbox that is marked. 
So, and you can see they've already got some of these items that are located in there. And then every so often, our trader will actually come through and we will get some income from trading. Uh, in fact, let's look under our budget. Okay, no trade income just yet. Everything is still from our villagers. All right, we have two unemployed folks. Uh, let's actually get those guys taken care of first. Workplace list. Let's actually go ahead and max out our gathering hut. And let's see, where else do we want to go? Let's go stone cutter for right now. And then let's take a quick look. Uh, let's see, four more days for that. We're good. And as far as our goals here, it wants us to, to assign in our final slot, it wants us to assign the tools to the warehouse. Okay, so we'll take care of that. Final slot, let's find the tools. And sure enough, there we go. So we've set up our first trade route. We've set up the items that we're going to be selling as well as the items that we're going to be buying. So now we are all set. Let's actually go under the territory because we've got some more land that has been opened up to us. Uh, and right now, let's see, this looks like a, a really good area. We might could use this for farmland in the future. We'll choose that one. And we have one additional one, and I like the resources I see down here. So we'll choose that one. Now we have another opportunity to choose who we're going to help. So if we choose to help the king and gain favor with the king, we'll need to deliver 30 berries. Clergy, same thing, berries. And we have a certain amount of time to do that. So it looks like all of these are going to be using the berries. Uh, let's see, if we help our people, that will increase our happiness. Let's go ahead and help our people. And now in the top left-hand corner, you can see deliver 30 berries within the next 60 days. And as soon as we have 30 berries available uh, here within uh, our storage, then this will turn into green and we'll be able to complete that. That's how you're going to complete these particular uh, goals that we have. Also, you notice we got some more villagers. So things happen very quickly. And that's one of the things I wanted to do in this uh, very first video is give you an opportunity to see how the game gets started and how things uh, begin. So now we've got these additional villagers and there they are. So what I'm going to do at this point is, again, normally I would slow down time and and work with it much better than what I'm doing now. But for our purposes today, let's go ahead and extend out our extraction zone. And I'm going to use all of this upper area here. Okay, then we've got our berries. So I'm going to put a little bit there. Okay, that looks good. We are in good shape. I don't want to work with that. I'll probably be using this for more uh, housing in the near future, but we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves now. Uh, in fact, now that I notice we have two villagers that are lacking for some housing. All right, you notice that there are uh, different colors here. Right now, I'm not terribly worried about it because we're just doing this for demonstration purposes, but... Uh, those are the different areas of land and how valuable they are uh, as far as where the villagers want to live. But again, right now, for our purposes, I am not terribly worried about that. We're simply filling in the blanks as best we can, and I'll leave it to you guys to decide how you want uh, to work on those things going forward. You also see now that we're in uh, these different zones, we have reforestation. So this is a good opportunity for us to set up reforestation in these areas where our woodcutters have come in and cut down all the trees. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and set up reforestation there. And in order to actually do reforestation, we would need to set up a forester camp. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll go ahead and put that about right there again we'll put him near the area that they're going to be working in two unemployed villagers and right now we have a very nice 
flow to things. The next thing we'll get into upgrading will be, into, we'll get into the farming. Uh, we'll get into sheep, which will enable us to get into cloth, which means we can get into uh, making clothes and so on. There we go. We got two new villagers. So things are progressing very nicely. And just sort of conclude this video. Um, I have had one, maybe two crashes so far in the game. Uh, but those were after I had been playing for uh, actually about a couple of hours. So I, And we've had no crashes to this point in the video. So the game is pretty stable. The uh, the frames per second have been great. I've had no issues there, no stuttering, uh, no no real popping in and out of textures, anything like that. So I'm very happy with the game to this point, and I really can't wait to see how things progress moving forward, not only with the game itself, but what type of mods we might have access to uh, as we get closer to release. So that's going to do it for today's video. Hopefully, this has given you what you need to decide if this is the right purchase for you. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned as we will continue our coverage on Neepit Gaming.